Morning, ladies and gentlemen, it's Professor Williams, and today we're going to talk about box plots or box and whisker plots and how we can use a box plot to identify potential outliers in our data as well as learn a little bit about the shape of our data. Before you begin, you'll need to sort your data smallest to largest. What I have here is I have 30 observations, and it's the number of days that it takes customers to pay an invoice from a local business. So we'll be using these 30 observations in order to create our box plot. A box plot is based on what we refer to as a five number summary, and it's made up of the largest and smallest data points, the median, which is also known as the second quartile, and then the first quartile, Q1, and the third quartile, Q3. So I'm going to start with the easy ones first because I sorted my data. I know my largest observation is 82 and my smallest is 13. But because I had an even number of observations, in order to find the median, I ended up taking the 15th and the 16th observation, adding them together, finding the middle by dividing by 2, and it gives me a median of 39.5. So those were the easy ones. So now we're going to go down here and we want to talk about how we're going to use um, the formula to find the first and the third quartile. So the process we're going to use is this idea of finding the location of the first quartile. And the first quartile is the same thing as P25. So one quartile 25 equals 25 percentiles. So we're going to take our number of observations, which in our case is 30. We're going to add one and we're going to multiply it by the percentile we're looking for divided by 100. So when I plug that in the formula, it looks like the location of the first quartile is going to be at 7.75. So that means that we want the seventh observation and then we want 0.75 of the distance between the seventh and the eighth value. So I find my whole part first and that seventh value is 31. And then the next value in the data set is 34. So I want to move 0.75 of the distance between the two. So I simply subtracted the two, found out that there were three um, apart, took that three, multiplied it by the 0.75, which is that less than a whole number that we moved, came, back, came up with 2.25. We need to add the, the little remainder part, sorry about that, that little remainder part back to seven, and now we know that we're at 33.25 is the location of Q1. So now I'm going to do the same thing for the third quartile. I'm going to find the location of my percentile. And in this case, the third quartile is equal to P75. Remember, three quarters equals 75. So I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to take number of observations plus one. I'm going to substitute in that 75 for my P and now I have 23.25. So I need the 23rd value in the data set. I'm going to start at the top, count down until I get to 23 and then I want 0.25 of the distance between the 23rd observation and the 24th observation. So again, I found my 23rd value, that's 50, and now I know that my next 24th value is 51, so I need to see how far is it from here to here, and it's simply one, and I want to move 0.25 of that one, so I take the one times the 0.25, add it back to my 23rd value, and now I know that Q3, or P75, is 50.25. I 
All right, now we're going to uh, deal with two other um, things that we need in order to get our box plot, and that's the IQR, which is the interquartile range. And IQR is simply the difference between Q3 and Q1. In other words, how far is it or how wide is the middle 50% of my data? So to find the IQR, I simply take Q3 minus Q1, and now I know that my interquartile range is 17. And I need that IQR in order to construct these set of inner and outer fences. So here are the formulas for inner and outer fences. So on my inner fences, I begin at Q3, and I move to the right one and a half times the IQR. Um, and then I need a lower inner fence, so I begin at Q1, and I move to the left by subtracting 1.5 times the IQR. Then I need outer fences. And so same thing, I'm going to start at Q3, and I'm going to move to the right three times the IQR. I'm going to begin at Q1, I'm going to move to the left by subtracting three times the IQR. This 1.5 times IQR and 3.0 times IQR is the standard formula. So these formulas right here will never change. The only thing that will change is obviously is the value of your quartile and the value of your IQR. So I've done the math by simply taking Q3 plus 1.5 times the IQR Q1 minus 1.5 times the IQR. You get the, the picture. This is plug and play at this point. And now I know that I have two inner fences. I have a lower inner fence of 7.75, upper inner fence of 75.75, lower outer fence of a negative 17.75, and an upper outer, fen outer fence of 101.25. Now that I have my five number summary, my IQR, and my inner and outer fences, I can now create my box plot. Just a few quick items before we can before we do our box plot. Remember that the box of the box plot is literally the IQR, where we let Q1 and Q3 serve as the hinges. Our whiskers are going to extend to the left until it reaches the smallest value and to the right for the largest value in the data set. We're always going to place our median inside the box. And then finally, I'm going to place my upper and lower fences onto my box plot. And through the magic of my computer, bingo, here is my box plot. So. I'm just going to talk you through this real quick. Right? Remember we said that we had Q1 and Q3 as our hinges. So what we really know is that the width of this box, in other words, from this point to this point, this is simply our IQR, which was equal to 17. So then I created my right whisker by extending my whisker all the way to my largest data value of 82. I got my left whisker by moving down to my smallest value, which was 13. And again, remember I said that I was going to place the median inside of my box, 39.5. Then I placed my inner fences. So I got 75, 75, 7.75, my outer fence, upper outer fence of 101.25 lower out of fence of negative 17.75. And all that's fine and, and dandy, but what does it tell us about outliers? Well, the first thing it tells us is that everything from this hinge point to the inner fence, whoops, everything from our hinge to our inner fence, got a little carried away there, is just normal data. So I go from my inner fence 
all the way back to my hinge. We're happy. Those are just what we refer to as normal observations. But then we get to this inner fence, outer fence. This area right here, use yellow for caution, right? this area in between the inner and outer fence. Generally, what we know, what we consider here is that in this area, we have mild outliers. So they're unusual observations, but they're just mildly strange. And there's some debate among researchers whether or not you remove mild outliers or not. Um, I'm sure you'll study about that in a future statistics class. However, once we get beyond this outer fence, so if we have data points that fall out here, then what we know about those is those are extreme outliers. And it is exceedingly rare for us to keep an extreme outlier um, in our data once we perform our analysis. Um, those observations tend to be so unlike the others that they qualify to be excluded. And so what we see in my data of 30 of the 30 days is I have one mild outlier, which it happens to be the largest value in the data set. So I have a choice as to whether or not I'm going to remove it. Since I have 30 observations and since this one is since I only have one mild outlier, I will probably remove it prior to me running my analysis of the data for this client. Um, it's far enough away from the inner fence um, and there's only one. And I would think that because the median, right, we see this median box, this line pretty close to the center of the box, um, that if I take out this mild outlier, I might, may find out that my data is virtually normally distributed. So um, whether or not we eliminate outliers or not, like I said, is sometimes research or preference. But what we have here is we have a beautifully constructed, properly labeled, properly constructed box and whisker plot. And I wish you much success in your studies. See you soon.